In this video, I'm going to be looking exclusively at P-channel MOSFETs. Here is the test setup that I use for P-channel MOSFETs. It's really somewhat different than the one I use for N-channel because I had to reverse the um, vol um, voltage polarities and so forth. Down here you have a small variable power supply. You plug in a wall wart there and it's 0 to 24 volts or so depending on the wall wart that plugs into it. This meter measures the voltage off the variable power supply which goes to the MOSFET gate circuit. This up here is an amp meter. This is, this is an amp meter to measure my current. And this meter here measures the source, uh, let's see, that would be the drain source voltage of the device under test. Here is a single MOSFET device in this particular socket. This is one with four P-channel MOSFETs wired in parallel. We will get to that in this video as well. Here's the actual circuit diagram to the test setup. I have a 3.2 ohm load resistor. That was that collection of high watt resistors all connected in parallel. Here is my test device, Q1. Here is, this represents the ammeter. And of course, I'm doing positive to negative flow. And uh, that's your current indication. Test point two is, um, is your... Uh, drain source voltage, and of course, test point one is my input voltage to the gate. While you can use this 10K resistor, I replaced it with the switching power supply, which does a better, more stable job. All right, at test point one, when I set it to 3.3 volts, the Q1 does not turn on. Uh, test point two is gonna read the full voltage back from the power supply, and there's going to be no current draw drain at all. Let's go to 5 volts on test point 1. Now the device is conducting, sort of. Nonetheless, it is now turned on, and it has a drain source current of 2.06 amps, but the drain VDS, or the voltage across the drain source, is almost 4 volts. That's not very good when you get down to it. Even when I took test point 1 to 10 volts, TP2, that's the voltage uh, drain to source, is still around 3.5 volts, and my uh, drain current went up to 2.2 amps. This is not a very good device. When we used it in H bridges in the early, uh, early on, it tends to get hot, and man, it got hot under these tests, even with a heat, heat sink. In about 10 seconds, that small heat sink would get hot enough to really, literally burn your fingers. Um, this is not the way to go. Now, let's look at my test results on four different devices. Well, really three devices and one device connected in parallel. The IRF 9540s that I had, this is what this, it's rated for 100 volts. It should have had 0.117 ohms RDS. <laughs> Wasn't even close. Even at, um, it was just terrible. Even at five, it, ne it never operated at, uh, was completely off at 3.3 volts. Even at five volts, it was only 1.39 amps. Even at 10 volts, it was 2.68 amps, 4.56 volts, almost 5 volts drop VDS. Terrible. This thing, I took whatever, I didn't have many of these, I junked them. Now, let's go to the IRF 9630. This is uh, rated for 200 volts. It has 0.8 ohms RDS. Of course, it didn't cut on at 3.3 either, but it didn't do a, it did better than the 9540, but not by a whole lot. By the time I input 10 volts, I only had about three amps of current flow. 
this is why it was getting hot. But one thing you'll learn in these spec sheets is these devices are designed to be parallel. So I connected four of the IRF 9630s in parallel. And of course, it didn't work at 3.3 volts. Ah, but look at the ratings now. At 5 volts input on the gate, almost 3.6 amps current, and a voltage drop uh, drain source, 0.91 volts. Hey, that's more what we want. 3.6, at 10 volts, I went up to about 3.6 and the drop across uh, drain source was 0.71 volts. That's great. You can use them like that. Now I have a fourth, I have another device. This is the IRF 4905. It's only rated for 55 volts. It has 0.02 ohms RDS. At 3.3 volts, it was virtually all the way on. Great. Uh, 3.81 amps at 3.3 volts at a resistance of 0.44 ohms. At 5 volts, the same. At 10 volts, the same. This is the one you want to use in your projects, the IRF 4905. This is a P-channel. Uh, you have one limitation, though. It's only good for 55 volts. You'll find out when I do the video on in-channel MOSFETs that um, you'll find out that the ultra-low resistance MOSFETs are also low voltage. You won't find a 0.02, or at least I haven't found a 0.02 ohm 200 volt device. If you need something greater than 55, you're going to have to parallel uh, things like the 9630, which works great, and I'll show you how I paralleled them. Here again is my test circuit at 5 volts. I have 3.6 amps, literally. Here is the parallel MOSFETs down here. That's the, that's the little adapter for the single transistor devices. But here is this, 0.91 ohms at 5 volts, drawing almost 3.6 amps. That's pretty good. Here it is at 10 volts, where it dropped to 0.71 volts and 3.65 amps. That's excellent. And this is rated for 200 volts. Here's a sort of a blown up picture of the four MOSFETs. I got them on four heat sinks. The heat sinks I salvaged off of junk boards. And this configuration does a lot of things besides lowering my on resistance, it distributes the heat out to four different devices and the thing barely got warm. Um, one thing you'll know when you check these devices, when you parallel them like this, I had a page it's in the description where you can read on that on paralleling MOSFETs. The gate source capacitance added. So the single device here had a um, capacitance of what? 1 NF? By the time I paralleled the 4, it had 4 NF together. So all the gate source capacitances and so forth do actually add. Here's the actual test circuits and the results from the 4 parallel connected p-channel irf 9630s here is the results from the charts it's not it's off at 3.3 volts it's nearly all the way on at 5 volts at 3.59 amps and test point 2 is 0 .9, 0 0.91 volts <coughs> excuse me at 10 volts Test point two is reading 0.71 volts and 3.65 amps. All right. And here is the last test. This is the IRF 4905. This is the MOSFET I think you should use if you need, a, need something under 55 volts. That's connected here. 
here's the variable power supply there's the four that were in parallel they're, so, they're off to the side here's my input amps 3.3 uh, 3.3 volts 3.8 amps 0.44 ohms VDS and that's it so that's a review of p-channel MOSFETs and connecting them in parallel <coughs> excuse me again remember one important issue or two of them actually this meter if you stick a MOSFET in it these little type electronic um, semiconductor testers they will tell you that something is on it maybe 3.8 volts or something but in the real load test that means it's barely on if anything it's not really on it was on just enough that it could detect it so that's pretty much of an error and uh, final note when MOSFETs get hot and I've noticed this with everyone I tested note again if they get hot and you don't have proper heat sinking on them their internal resistance increases and your VDS will climb and so I hope that was useful thanks for listening please hit the like button and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com